Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Today is July the 18th, 2020. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I was just on Twitter and I noticed that Oscar De La Hoya has posted a few uh, tweets where he talks about how he wants to return at 154 pounds. Right? Jamel Charlo's division. The division of Erickson Lubin. You know, it's not going to work. Uh, I'm a big Oscar fan. I remember when Oscar was in his prime, he's certainly a Hall of Famer. He um, certainly fought huge fights. Uh, Chavez, uh, Whitaker, uh, Corte, Mosley, Vargas. Uh, this is a fighter's fighter. But, and let me also say too, I don't have anything against older guys who want to come back and see where, they're sta where they stand against the younger people, right? I personally believe that Mike Tyson whose defense probably hasn't improved since he started getting beaten up at the end of his career, I do believe offensively Mike Tyson has the hand speed and the power, even in his 50s, to give an Anthony Joshua a hard time at least for the first few rounds of the fight. Right? But let me say this. Fighters need to realize their strengths and their weaknesses. One of the best things Oscar had going for him, and a lot of young fighters have this going for themselves, is the fact that at 5'10 and a half, let me repeat that, 5'10 and a half, Oscar was physically bigger than many of the guys he fought at 140 and 147. Right? Physically bigger. All you have to do is look at his fight against Floyd, which was tabled for 154. Right? Mayweather doesn't even come in at 154. Mayweather comes in at something like 150 or 151. When you look at the two men, you notice Oscar is just much bigger than Floyd Mayweather. Understand, too, one of the secrets to the Manny Pacquiao fight, which was supposed to take place at 147, was the rehydration clause. Right? Manny, in one of the best moves a fighter has made in the last 25 years, Manny insisted on rehydration clause language to be put in the contract. So Oscar wasn't able to come in the ring outweighing his opponent by several pounds. Right? Older guys don't have, this is just a rule of thumb, um, especially older guys in their 50s, don't have the dexterity, the agility of a younger guy. Right? Nor do they have the stamina now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's some guy at your 24-hour fitness who has kept himself in shape for life, who is, you know, a great athlete at 24-hour uh, fitness, and you look at him and you probably think, wow, this guy has more stamina than people half his age. Okay, I'm not here to dispute that. But this is world-class boxing. The guys Oscar would be competing against are world-class fighters. This also isn't the heavyweight division where, you know, Mike Tyson doesn't have to be defensively blessed. If he lands once the right way, that could be the entire fight. Understand, Oscar in his prime, let's go back to his prime, did not keep himself in shape between fights. This wasn't the gym warrior. When he went up to middleweight, and this was decades ago, right? He's talking about coming back at 154. Understand, Oscar fought for the middleweight championship. 
against Bernard Hopkins. And understand, Hopkins was a gym warrior. Hopkins was a guy who didn't have a donut for years. To the boxing press, Hopkins is still with us. You can just go up to him and talk to him. Right? He'll tell you the steps he took to keep himself in shape. Right? Oscar, by contrast, was fighting at middleweight because Oscar had had problems in other weight classes. Right? I don't view Oscar as a guy whose reflexes would age well. Right? His reflexes look shot against Manny Pacquiao, don't they? Shot. How are you going to fight Jamel Charlo, a guy who's already KO'd Erickson Lubin? How are you going to fight him at 154 pounds? Understand, I've been here online and I've criticized Charlo. I took Tony Harrison against him. People might recall that. It delivered the first time. Right? I've criticized Charlo, but Charlo is young. He has quick reflexes. He's energetic. He has an ambush style. In other words, he's outside. Oh, he's inside throwing bombs. Then he's back outside. Folks, it's that movement. It's that kind of fight style that would give an older fighter problems. Right? Oscar doesn't have the reflexes right now to keep up with Jamel Charlo. He just doesn't. Let me say this, too. I know Oscar had a lethal left hand back in the day. His right wasn't lethal. I believe as you look at the Floyd Mayweather tape, you're going to notice Mayweather is unafraid of that right hand. Right? He's unafraid of Oscar's right hand. Now again, this is different than the heavyweight division, where if Mike Tyson were in the ring in some exhibition with Anthony Joshua, for example, Joshua isn't cat quick like Jamel Charlo, right? At heavyweight, certain heavyweights have gotten by on power, on muscle, on blowing you out of the pocket. So an older guy has more of a chance because an older guy knows where to find a Anthony Joshua, right? Unless, unless the older guy fights like Andy Ruiz, and doesn't move that well, the older guy should be able to find Anthony Joshua. Not so much at 154. Right? Let me also say, too, that because Oscar's one-handed, a uh, Jamel Charlo, uh, Erickson Lubin, would key on his left hand. Right? I'm guessing Lubin comes in low tries to take out Oscar's body. I'm guessing Oscar is hoping that he could impose his power on these younger guys. As they say, power is the last to go. The problem is that works if you're two-handed. Right? If Mike Tyson comes up to you and tries to impose punching power on you, if George Foreman comes up to you and tries to impose punching power on you, you have a lot to think about, right? You're looking here, you're looking here, you're looking here. Not if the guy is Oscar De La Hoya, right? And let's face it, you have some one-handed fighters right now where it's very hard to avoid their power punch, right? Deontay Wilder made a career of knocking out guys with right hands, right? But understand, Deontay Wilder, in his prime, right? Let's remember heavyweights age more slowly. Wilder's in his 30s. That's in his prime in the heavyweight division. Deontay Wilder, in his prime, has timing down, right? He's, he's in the ring. He can see openings. It's like hitting a baseball. So he has Dominique Brazil in front of him. Brazil has to be in the wrong position, just for a second to get knocked out. You remember Luis Ortiz, the second fight, 
Ortiz is throwing a shutout, in my opinion. Then he's in the wrong position at the end of a round. Good night. Turn off the lights. Successful title defense. Now, do you really think that Oscar De La Hoya, whose reflexes look gone at the end of his career, who had demons outside the ring, who was not a gym rat, Right? He's not a Bernard Hopkins. He's not an Evander Holifield. He's not a Vladimir Klitschko. He's not one of these guys who you've never seen out of shape. Right? You look at Evander Holifield, you can't tell if he's training for a fight or not. The guy's always going to be in shape. Right? He's not those guys. He's not Floyd Mayweather, another guy who's always in shape. Right, no, this is the other side of the aisle. This is the Ricky Hatton, Roberto Duran side of boxing. Until recently, this was the Tyson Fury side of boxing, right? Where guys between fights suddenly gained a few pounds. You're in a pub, you look over, you think, wow, that guy looks like Ricky Hatton. Then somebody says, oh no, that is Ricky Hatton. Right, one of the secrets to the Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran rematch was that Mike Trainer, who used to advise Ray Leonard, was out someplace. He was down in Panama or someplace, right? Looking for Roberto Duran, he finds him in a restaurant. Duran has gained weight since their first fight, and he's having a big meal. So, of course, Mike Trainer realized, hey, if I could get Duran to sign a contract for a fight, in a few weeks, he's going to spend training camp losing weight, not working on his game. That's what happened, folks. You end up with the no moss fight. Right? Duran's not doing that badly in the fight. But he has a stomach ache. You know why. So now, here's Oscar De La Hoya. Right? Google him. You're going to read about self-employed models or something like that hanging out with Oscar you're gonna read about Oscar out let's say far away from the gym wearing a tire that wasn't gym attire being photographed when he was let's say less than alert right you're gonna find out that Oscar was one of these guys who you know thought that the fame entitled him to live the life Right? Let me say, there's nothing wrong with that. Some of, some of the people around you are freaks. I'm not, you know, it's like, hey, boxing allows you to do a lot of things. But let's just say that's not the kind of guy who's going to be able to enter the ring 20 years later and be on his game enough to compete with a world champion at 154 pounds. Especially when that world champion, Jamel Charlo, moves well, right? I can criticize Jamel Charlo. I can say he's too episodic. Just understand, if you're an older guy, it's just like basketball. You're an older guy, you go to the park, the last person on the court you want to stick is the guy who plays like Steph Curry, right? He's here, he's there, he's here. Oh, guess what? If you're not out on him, running around with him, he's draining three after three. Right? Old guys show up at the park to play basketball. They see some dude hanging around the low post. They say, hey, I'm going to stick him. Right? I don't want to stick Ja Morant or Trey Young. You know, some dude is going to be running me off screens and running around who I can't keep up with. Jamel Charlo is that boxing equivalent. So Jamel Charlo, in response... To a De La Hoya tweet said, hey, look, I know you're talking about me. <laughs> Basically said, hey, we know you're picking 154 because of me. Understand the champ is ready to fight Oscar. If they announce that fight, put your money on the champ. Look, I'm willing to give old guys an opportunity. I'm still not sure if Tommy Morrison beat George Foreman. Right? I'm definitely willing to give old guys an opportunity. I believe Vladimir Klitschko would be viable against several younger fighters 
I wrongly took Vladimir Klitschko when he fought a then unbeaten Anthony Joshua. But the styles matter. I knew when Klitschko fought Joshua, Joshua was going to be there to be found. Right? Joshua is the fighter in the low post. Here, Oscar is trying to guard Steph Curry. And, of course, I also know that a Vladimir Klitschko kept himself in shape. As I've said, Klitschko's been in the game for decades. I have never seen Vladimir Klitschko out of shape. Right? Never. Well, understand, with Oscar, I've seen Oscar out of shape. Let me say this, too. I was at some boxing event someplace, and I saw Oscar. Oscar was standing just a few feet from me. And I looked at Oscar, and I said, man, he's big. <laughs> you know, you meet some of these guys, and you understand, wow, this guy's bigger than I thought he was. Right? On TV, you don't realize how big he is. Well, that works when you're younger. If you're 5, 10 and a half and you're 25 years old, right? You have a certain fluidity. Whether or not you're a diligent guy in the gym, you could be running around with self employed models, right? If you're 25, your body's bouncing back. You're coordinated. You can actually do damage at 135, 140, 147, 154. Right? You're 5, 10 and a half. You haven't been diligent in the gym. You've had demons. Right? Then you're coming back against agile competition. And in your prime, you were a one-handed fighter. And it's doubtful that you have the legs that you had at the end of the Felix Trinidad fight. When, let's face it, Oscar's dancing circles around Felix Trinidad. I think most of us here would be shocked if Oscar circa 2020 is able to get up on his toes like that late in the fight. Let's remember, Oscar's dancing against Trinidad at the end of the fight. Right at the end of the fight, he's dancing against Trinidad. In your heart, you know he's not that fighter anymore. I'm hoping Oscar's talking about coming back to try to lure Conor McGregor in the ring. Right? By the way, as I said in an interview I did for Combat Sports on CBS a while ago, Google that, I think McGregor wins that fight. Right? I think McGregor was far better at a boxer as a boxer than I thought he would be against Floyd. Don't get me wrong. Floyd won the fight. I cashed that ticket. But I'm hoping Oscar's trying to pick on a guy who would be having his second professional boxing match. Not a champion. A world champion who spent in his life in boxing who moves like Jamel Charlo. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Uh, if Oscar comes back, I think he'd have a problem with Jamel Charlo. Quite frankly, if I were Oscar, I'd think about coming back at 160. Maybe even 168. Right? If I'm Oscar, that's the neighborhood I would target. Right? John Ryder did awfully good, didn't he? Against Callum Smith. David Benavides, and I know he has a lot of fans here online, he's a potted plant who doesn't move well in the ring. Right? These are elite guys at 168. Right? You come back at 154 and guys are moving around the ring, might not end well. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.